Okay, in this video I'm going to unbox a couple of new tools. And the first one is something that I tried to make myself as a DIY version, which I had to get rid of when I moved up to this room. But this one should be a lot better. And it's an air filter or air scrubber from Axminster Tools, AC15AFS. And it is the miniature or craft version, although it does weigh 20 kilos and isn't that miniature. That said, it would fit on the end of a 600mm wide workbench. And it does come with a carry handle too. So you have your mounts, although I'm not going to install it because my ceiling doesn't look like it can take it. It also comes with a manual and a remote control with a battery. Okay, something didn't work there, but it's not that noticeable in the video, and I didn't notice until after I'd brought out the digital anemometer to measure the airflow, but I'll talk about that in a moment. On screen now are the advertised airflow readings in meters cubed per hour and cubic feet per minute. The manual had it in imperial, while the machine itself had those measurements written in metric. What I had noticed was the readings were a lot more like those advertised while measuring from the top right corner of the filter and it would diminish ever so slightly elsewhere but pretty good considering most advertising is grossly overrated. Anyway I did mention there was a problem and now I'll describe what that is. In the lower setting it actually doesn't spin. Hello? Yeah, I'm having a go with the AC15AFS and it says it's a free speed machine uh, for scrubbing air and I can get the top and medium speed to work but when I change it to the lower speed it basically doesn't do anything. Is that normal? Okay, that cheeky look to screen is me telling you I know I should admit I actually dropped the unit while it was still in the box. And although I could have had it sent back because Axminster's customer service is actually very good, I thought, let me have a look at the electronics just to be sure. Obviously this isn't advised to do this in the instruction manuals, but I thought, let's save the planet a little bit and not have a vehicle turn up to take this away just so that they can bring me another one. I removed the back panel display and noticed a Molex style cable connector was ever so slightly disconnected from the circuit board which I pushed back into position. Obviously while the power's off and I also make sure not to touch anything at the back here because there are some capacitors there and I don't want to get a little shock. I returned it, placed the machine screws now, if I plug it back in and turn it on again. Right, that's high, that's medium, and that's low. It'll definitely circulate air around the room when it's on. So, I can turn that off. Now I can open the carbon filters for this unit and show you how to install them. Okay, so I just want to check that these are the right things. So it should be a pre-filter and a post-filter. It's called a pleated main filter. So that looks like the one that goes on the inside. And this is activated carbon filter, like what you would have in uh, your kitchen extractor. It's not described as something that you can use while soldering. And I definitely wouldn't use this if I was welding, but I think it's okay. Ooh, this is nice. It's actually aluminium as opposed to paper. It is the... So, there you go. To change the filters, you'll need to begin by removing the two machine screws from the top of this side flap, and then the flap itself, and then the pre-filter, and then the main filter. And it's a very simple squirrel cage fan 
on the blower fan. Let's get my torch. See what that feels like. So the motor's mounted on with some rubber feet, which helps keep the noise down. And then the wires go through to the control panel, which is insulated in a metal box. Uh, the air gets drawn through this side here, and then and then out the back with this tiny vent there. And then you've also got you've got a couple of buttons here to turn it on to your different speeds, and then your timer which you can only use with a remote control so if you lose this it doesn't seem like there's any way to change that i can flip it around and i can actually put filters that i want to use with it which are the carbon filters slide it in while it's compact and then, so this one here has an arrow indicating which way it should go i'm assuming this would have the same, but it doesn't. But I think it doesn't matter because the metal on this is on the inside. And you've got some metal bars on both sides. There's four there, three there. So let's put the four on this side. And that should fit in like that. And now I can place the flap. I actually bought three of the trade ones for work just to kind of help reduce airborne particles in a couple areas of the workshop there where I look after and uh, they're also really nice units but they're much larger double the width of that but um, to get one in this space would have just been a bit too much this is desktop size I know I can fit that pretty easily on my desk if I ever get it cleared and the dimensions would be 505, 430 that way. And the height is 255, and that's all in millimeters. Now, I'm going to use this with my CNC machine. That will be in the room while it operates. The CNC machine will still have its main extraction system trying to collect dust at the source. And that's where most of the dust will be collected. But anything that escapes the dust shoe would then become airborne and hopefully get collected by this thing here. The only thing I changed on this in the end was buying some nice 40 mil wide uh, neoprene feet and bolting them on instead uh, as I'm going to be using this as a mobile air filter where I move it where necessary. It made sense to have better quality feet. So this box is a little bit bigger and inside it, it should contain my new extractor. I'm now going to unbox the extractor, but this room is just too small and the box too big for me to frame this in any reasonable way. So what I'll do is cut to individual shots of the parts that are supplied and describe anything interesting I notice along the way. First thing to mention is that this comes with a clearly written manual with images of the machine it describes, both the single motor NV750 and the dual motor NVD750. I bought the NV750 version, which was a little cheaper and will be a little quieter. This will suit my needs because this will go on my CNC machine in a separate room, away from where I would normally be sitting and working. It was supplied with the narrower, although still quite girthy, 51mm inner diameter hose, along with a steel gold per attachment, which might be useful for rolling out pastry. In the box was also a blower cap, which fits onto the rear of the machine to help baffle the airflow of the exiting air. The hose can be attached to the rear air vent if, for example, you want to use the extract as a blower, or simply to vent air to a specific area. There's also several large NVM 4BH HEPA flow bags supplied. Although the machine came so it could be used with the side inlet, where the bag is cut in half and placed between the inner filter and the collection area. I plan to use the bags with the central inlet, as it doesn't make sense to go to all that effort of using the extractor just so that you can make a mess and expose yourself to the harmful content when emptying the drum.
it is also supplied on a wheelie mobility stand which will be useful if I ever retire or when I'm feeling lazy but I required a mallet to fit the upper handle on which was the only thing the manual didn't describe it instead illustrated needing two arrows and most people only have one arrow laying around to be honest so it would have been really useful if the extractor came with a couple arrows in the box okay so I just had to watch my old video to work out what units I used to measure the velocity of the old extractor and I was getting about 10 meters per second so let's try this one and see what we get so the light on so which we can see that 9.48 uh, that's with the anemometer about a centimeter away from the inlet when it's hang on it goes up to 15 so if you want to take the extractor off the mobile stand all you need to do is raise this toggle clamp it's actually a really nice size extractor and much better than my old one my plan is to use the extractor on the cnc machine although i may end up changing the hose or adapting it in some way so that it fits if you want to know more about this cnc machine which i've designed and built i've got a video a little bit about it which i'll link in one of the corners I'm going to leave this video here and in the next one on this channel I'll show you the new location for the CNC machine and how I set up the extractor and air filter. If you want to know more about these products I've got some affiliated links in the description below as well as a link to the purchasable manual for my DIY CNC machine. On the second channel I'll soon be releasing some videos about my latest and hopefully final CNC controller which leaves me with the last thing to say which is thanks again for watching, hope everyone is safe and well and don't forget to sacrifice a thumb to the algorithm gods. Thank you.